it's Shari here today and I'm going to be showing you how I made this fun pick of the patch Halloween double slider surprise card. So first here's the pick of the patch stamps we're going to be using and the double slider surprise die and I've already cut my pieces out that I'm going to use to create this double slider card. And I've cut everything out of white cardstock so here is the track in the inside, the stopper, we have two of the outside panels and two of those inside cards. I'm going to be doing some inking on one of the outside panels and both of the cards that go inside. So I'm just going to pull those out and then I'll set these other pieces aside. So I'm creating kind of a night sky. It's some pretty colors though. I'm using some Wilted Violet Distress Ink and some Blueprint Sketch and also some faded jeans and chip sapphire you'll see here. And I'm just kind of making it sort of like a galaxy sky. I didn't want it to be a gradient from top to bottom, so it's sort of spotty. So you can see I started with three spots of the purple in the wilted violet there. And now I'm just kind of filling in around them with the blueprint sketch. I'll go back in with the purple and start blending the two colors together. And I'm going to go back in with a little more blueprint sketch. And mostly I colored it in the blueprint sketch and the wilted violet. The other colors are going to come in when I want to sort of darken up the edges a little bit. So now I've got faded jeans and I'm just going along the edges. I think this really defines sort of the outside edges of this little scene we're going to create. And I've done the same thing to the little cards that go on the inside. I think I pulled in a little bit of chip sapphire on that outside piece too. You can see how it's much darker at the bottom. And now I'm going to add some flecks of metallic watercolors. I'm going to be using the blue and the purple because it goes with the colors of my background. Um, I think the gold also looks really cool on this background if you want the look of stars, but I just kind of want to. A spooky Halloween look. Um, I was going to have a lot going on on the front of this card so I didn't want to distract too much in the background but I do feel like this adds some interest to those backgrounds. So I've just gotten that blue watercolor really soupy with some water there and I've picked it up with my brush and I'm just tapping it with my finger to create those splatters. So it just sort of drops those splatters onto the surface of my paper. I'm using a fairly big brush so I can get a lot of paint in my tip every time. Now I'm going to repeat the same process with the purple. And you're going to see I am going to get a big giant splatter of water. But I didn't want it to look like water. I wanted it to stay with those purple colors. So I dabbed it with the brush and made a big purple splatter. Now that's a pretty big dot of water. And I'm trying to pick it up and maybe disperse it elsewhere, but I didn't want to make it any bigger. So you're actually going to see I will go with my chamois here and just pick it up a little bit and pull some of that water out. So I'm still going to have a big spot, but I actually ended up hiding that in the part of the card that doesn't come all the way out of the slot. So it's not a big deal really. Now I've stamped out a bunch of my images I'm going to use here in some jet black ink because I'm going to color them with Copic markers. So I've got my two little squirrels, I've got all the different pumpkins, even the one with the top off, I've got that pile of guts there, and then I've got the carving tools as well. Now I'm going to also stamp out some of the little vines and the swirls that go with the pumpkins, but since those aren't going to be colored, I'm going to stamp those in some cilantro ink. And I'll probably stamp out more than I'll use. Um, that's typically what I end up doing. Because I'm only going to use a couple of these for each pumpkin. Now I'm going to do some coloring here. So I'm actually starting with a yellow first as my base layer. And that way, when I add the oranges to it, I'm not going to make it too terribly dark orange. I can kind of still have a light orange 
I feel like when you start with an orange, things end up getting really dark. So this is my try of trying to keep it lighter in the beginning and then bringing the darker in on the edges. You can see I've already colored one of those pumpkins there. So I'm just showing you how I did this. I went from light to dark, and then I'm gonna work my way back and sort of feather out those flicks of color. I'm gonna color the tops of these just all the same, really simple. They're so small that there's really no need to do any shading. There's a lot going on on this card anyways. And then here's the pumpkin gut. So I'm definitely going in with a lighter orange. This is actually a yellow Copic, but to me it's still an orangey color. And then I went in with more of like a fleshy color for the seeds. I'm using some neutral grays for my squirrels. And as you can see, I've got three shades here. So I'm just gonna go in with my lightest shade first. Just give them all a nice coat of gray as a base. And then I'll go in with my darker ones and add some shadow. So I actually went to the really darkest one to add shadow. I feel like a lot of times when I do shadows, if I go with a medium one, I end up covering it up with the dark one. And then I have to feather it back out with the medium. And so in the end, it ends up being almost too dark. So actually on these squirrels, I only used two shades. Now I'm going to stamp the faces of the pumpkins and I decided to stamp this after I had them colored just to avoid any smudging of the ink that could have possibly occurred. It shouldn't happen but sometimes I start coloring too quickly and it's not quite dried yet and I end up smudging my images. So I just decided to go ahead and color them first and then I would decide what faces I wanted on there and just stamp that over the colored images. I used my dies to cut all the pieces out. And now I'm going to use some narwhal cardstock and some black licorice cardstock, along with that spooky fence border die, to create some pieces for my backgrounds. So I've cut that piece out of narwhal, that'll go on the card base, and then I'll cut down the black one to go on the front panel of my little scene. Also, to decorate the card base, I have a piece of fake tan cardstock cut here as my card base and I'm using the starry backdrops with some pumpkin spice ink and I'm just going to add the stars to that background almost like you used a piece of pattern paper that's tone on tone for the card base. I'm going to have to stamp this twice to cover the whole card. So I'll stamp it once towards the top and then I'll ink it up again and stamp it towards the bottom. I apologize for the weird things my camera's doing. My camera actually sits on my desk, so when I tap my desk really hard, I get kind of weird things that happen. So I'm just lining it up so that the stars don't overlap and they kind of fit in there. That center part will be covered up anyways. So now I'm taking the spooky fence I cut from the narwhal cardstock, and I'm just gonna line that up along the very bottom of my card base. This is gonna kinda slip behind our panel with the seam that we have here. So it's just sort of a continuation of the fence, just to fill it in a little bit and give it a little more interest. Now I'm going to start to assemble my double slider here. So I've got some double-sided tape. This is really thin tape. And this is the track piece. You're going to want to put a piece of adhesive on all four sides of this. So the top and bottom, right along that track. And then I will flip it over and do the same on the back side. Mine kind of got misaligned there, so I'm pulling it up before it gets stuck down make sure it's lined up nice and straight. And then as I said, I'm going to repeat that on the back side.
Now I'm also going to put a strip of that adhesive on those little flaps. I've already folded them down. So this is that outside panel piece that we did not put ink on. And then you can see under that tape, I'm going to do the same thing on the piece we did put ink on. Now for the slider mechanism. So I have a piece of a plastic target bag cut here to go on the track. And these are cut at like two and a quarter inches wide. I'm just going to put a piece of adhesive on the very end of it. I'm going to lay it down and just wrap this plastic around it. So the adhesive is on the top here. I'm going to peel that off and then I'll just take that piece that's on the right side and I'll just lay it over. So it's much longer than it needs to be, but then I'll trim it off. So you don't want it too tight, but you don't want it too loose. So the best way is just kind of line it up with the edges, make sure it's a little bit snug, just sort of lined up there, and then lay it over and adhere it down. Now, I did take it off camera to cut it, and I apologize. I just in case you've noticed the band-aid on my finger, I had an incident with an avocado and a knife, so I have some stitches, so I'm kind of struggling a little bit. <laughs> um, so I just needed to get a better handle on the cutting, and I actually did not want to accidentally cut myself again. So um, I just trimmed off that extra right at that adhesive line. And now that should slide pretty freely around that inner track. Now it's time to put some adhesive on there for the panels that go on the inside. So I'm putting a piece of adhesive right on that same spot where I have the adhesive sticking the plastic to itself. Then I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna put a piece on the back side, on the opposite side. So you'll notice on the front side, I did it on the left. When I flipped it over, I did the adhesive on the right. So you want them on the opposite sides. Now I can put these panels on. So I'm going to peel up that adhesive I stuck down on the seam. If I can get a hold of it. It's, sometimes it's hard to peel off on this plastic bag. You just got to work at it. And I'm lining it up with my grid mat just to keep it straight. I'm lining up the right side of that panel with the edges of that track piece. And I just laid it down on that adhesive. Now I'm going to flip it over. This is the back side. So you want to make sure that when you put down your panel, you're looking at the back side of the panel. I actually did it wrong at first and had to pull it off because I wasn't paying attention. So I pulled it off. Now I'm going to fix my mistake, do the same thing, line it up. As you can see, I'm looking at the white side, which is the back side of the panel. That way, when you flip it over, both the fronts. Are facing you. So one's going to be facing out and one's going to be facing in. Now I can make the little pocket. So I've already pulled off the adhesive off that flap. I'm just lining up the edges so that I can adhere them together just like this. I'm going to start to assemble. So you can see I have it open. The front ink side is on the flap at the top. So I'm going to put my track in with the fronts of my cards facing me because that front flap will fold over and then it will also be facing me. So I pulled the adhesive off the back of the track and I've stuck that down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the adhesive off the front of the track and before I close this pocket I will put the stopper in there. Just kind of making sure it moves and nothing is stuck to the adhesive. I'm going to pull it out to where I want it to stop because I don't want it to come all the way out. Just sort of halfway is about where I did it. And then I can pull up that flap and I'm going to take the stopper piece, which is just that rectangular piece. I'm going to snug it up against where that adhesive is that holds that card on. 
and I'm just going to stick it down to the adhesive that's on the top and the bottom of the track. And that way, when you pull those cards, that's where they're going to stop. So now I can fold over that bottom flap onto the track, pull off that adhesive that was on the folding flap, and I can adhere it all down. So now I have that whole mechanism created there. And that's as far as it will come out. So now it's time to put all the pieces on and decorate a little scene. So I've trimmed down the black Spooky Vents cardstock to the right width to match my little pocket panel here. And I'm just going to glue that down. I'm also going to white heat emboss the little arrow from the push here set. And these will be my little tabs that will go on my cards that pull out. Now, I will say right now that I did it backwards. So I just wasn't paying attention. I just put it on the edge like they point out. But these actually fold in the middle. So you'll see later when I folded them in, it was not pointing out. So it needs to point at the fold, not at the edge. Hopefully you can learn from my mistake and not do this too. But all I did in the end was folded them and did the arrow the correct way on the back side. So actually on my card, when you pull it out, if you pull it all the way out, you can see these wrong arrows on the back side of my little tabs. But I don't think that's really a big deal. It kind of just tells you you need to push it back in, right? So I'm just going to heat emboss those. That's white heat embossing. And I'm also using the new embossing ink from Lompon. I'm going to do the same thing on some black cardstock with my little sentiment. So it's your the pick the patch. So I'll just heat that up, make sure it's all melted, and then I will cut it down to the size that I want. I feel like it's easier to heat emboss on a larger piece of cardstock and then cut it down than it is to try and line it up and then also try to hold it while you heat emboss it and not burn your fingers. So now I am fixing my arrows. As you can see, they should point towards the fold so that when it's folded, they point out because that's going to be the part that's on the outside. So now that I have those fixed, I can adhere those to my panels. I am adhering these first so that they're already there and then I can work my spacing of my scene around them. I would hate to put my pumpkins on there and then be too close to where this overlaps and then have to overlap my pumpkin with the little tab. I just think that would be kind of poor planning on my part. So I'm just putting them on with a glue dot, one on each side, and then I'm just going to pinch it around the end of those cards that slide out. And I'm being very particular with my grid mat to try to get it in the center. You see now you can pull those and pull those out. So here's the rest of the assembly in super speed time. So I put my sentiment on the top there. I wanted to make sure that was spaced correctly from the top, so that's why I did that first. And then now I can put all the pieces that make the scene below it. So I'm putting that one little squirrel inside the pumpkin, and she's got the scooper. I put the lid of the pumpkin to the side and the guts where she scooped them out. And now her friend is down here and he's got the carving knife. This does look a little stabby, but <laughs> it's still fun. Um, and then I'm adding in the little vine. Now I'm going to add my other pumpkins with the faces to the sides. So the idea is the little squirrels are carving the pumpkins. And then when you pull out panels, there's the pumpkins they carved because now they have faces. So that was kind of the idea behind this card. So now that I have all my pieces together, I can take this whole panel assembly and put it on that card base that I decorated earlier. So I just put some very strong um, adhesive runner on the back. 
And now I'm going to stamp a sentiment on the inside after I make sure it's nice and stuck down. That just says Happy Halloween, which is also from the stamp set. So now it says, you're the pick of the patch and Happy Halloween on the inside. So how fun is this little card that pulls out and has the pumpkins? So there's our final card and here's another look at it. And then here's those fun pumpkins. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.